hello everyone my name is arohi and welcome to my channel so guys in my today's video we will learn about generative ai we will see what it is what it can create and how it works additionally i'll also cover some common questions that arise when we discuss about generative ai or large language models like what are the resources needed to train generative ai models can these models be trained on local machines or what are the benefits of using open source llms over the paid ones so these kind of things i'm going to cover in my today's class so let's start with what is generative ai generative ai can generate new content which can be images text audios and videos and these gen ai models learn from data it's trained on to create entirely new content by understanding the patterns and structures chat gpt is a very popular example of generative ai but before chat gpt became popular models like dali stable diffusion and mid journey they were leading the field of generative ai by creating images all these models are text to image generation models now what are text to image generation models text to image generation models takes input in the form of text prompts and they produce an output matching the description so suppose if you write a text prompt saying giraffe wearing a hat and sunglasses standing in a park so this text to image generation model will generate an image that visually represents this description Dali model was introduced in January 2021 and now we have Dali 2 which is an updated version and using Dali 2 we can create images from text prompts and another uh, example is stable diffusion model so stable diffusion models were introduced in August 2022 and the current version of stable diffusion model is stable diffusion XL 1.0 it can also make images guided by text prompts you can can also use stable diffusion models on your local computers means you can generate images using stable diffusion models on your local machines but if you want to generate images using dali model or mid journey then you need to you know then you need cloud services for that let me know in comment section if you want me to make a video on how to use stable diffusion models on a pc to generate images okay so these are the models that we have before chat gpt okay but when chat gpt was launched and it became very popular and widely used chat gpt is an app powered by gpt4 which is an llm developed by open ai and prior to gpt4 it was gpt3.5 and gpt3 okay and gpt5 is also coming so chat gpt is running on which llm gpt4 and with chat gpt text generation models came to existence they became popular and since then since the time chat gpt was released we have seen the development of various large language models like llama 3 by meta then mistral 7b gemini which is a model by google then gemma is there which is another model by google we have claude 3 by anthropic like this there are various large language models now now let's talk about video generation models recently runway introduced its ai video generation model gen3 alpha and re made it accessible to everyone this ai model is capable of generating realistic video clips up to 10 seconds long Let's check this model out. Just scroll down. These are the different video examples, and on each uh, video there is a prompt. Okay, just scroll down, and we can see. Okay, let's see this example. Here, okay, this is the video, and the prompt for this video is this: an empty warehouse where flowers start blooming from the concrete. So this is the video generation model by Runway. and then there is another model uh, sora sora is a model by open ai it is not released yet but it is also a video generation model then there is another video generation model this kling kling is like a sora only using this you can generate videos from the text prompts here you can see the example 
for this prompt this is the output video generated by this model so we have seen few gen ai models for generating images text and videos now now let's explore the various deep learning network architectures which are used in creating generative ai models first is generative adversarial networks gans gans were introduced to generate realistic data by setting two neural networks against each other generator and discriminator so guys i'm not going to uh, explain the gans or any other models over here in detail so if you want me to cover these topics you can comment in comment section and let me know what all topics you want me to cover then i'll create a separate video on those topics with the practical implementations okay so here we are just knowing that using what all different net network architectures we can create our gen ai models so the first one is gans and the second option is variational auto encoders using variational auto encoders also you can uh, create you can generate the gen ai models so these models learn to represent input data in a compact latent space and generate new data points by sampling from this space okay and then we have transformers transformers were originally developed for natural language processing tasks and transformers have shown impressive capabilities in generating text and images llms like gpt 3.5 or 4 and then llama models they were based on transformer network only and then we have diffusion models these models refine the generation process by modeling how data changes over time which leads to creation of high quality images and text so all these models can generate high quality images text and other content based on the data they were trained on so see the network architecture of all these models are different but the goal is same they using all these network architectures you can create your own llm now we know what is generative ai what kind of data it can generate and we have seen few generative ai models also now let's look at how generative ai work so the first task is training the model and to train the generative ai model we need huge data sets that contain examples of the type of content they are meant to generate so for example a uh, text generation model needs training data that contains large collection of books articles and websites and if we talk about image generation model image generation model need training data based on large collection of images and then during training generative ai model learns to recognize patterns and relationships within the data so once we have a trained generative model this model is then used to generate new content and for generating new content the gen ai model takes in input and use its learned model to generate new examples and see guys developing a generative ai model is a process that require continuous iteration and improvement why we need this continuous iteration and improvement because to refine the model output to refine the way how model generate new content okay so the generative ai model takes feedback to improve how they generate content and once the model is trained you can now deploy it and it can be integrated into applications or services where it interacts with users generate text or answer the questions or perform any other nlp task based on the context and the input provided so this is the basic overview which explains how generative ai model works so how it work we provide training data to model and then we train the model model learn to generate new example then we refine the model by providing it feedback and finally we can deploy that generative ai model so one more thing guys we can also fine tune the generative ai models and fine tuning means adjusting the model for specific use case and with fine tuning we can improve the model performance in particular uh, you know areas this fine tuning process involves training the model on smaller task specific datasets while keeping the pre-trained knowledge intact 
Now let's talk about the resources which are required to train such large scale generative AI models like ChatGPT or Llama 3. So we'll talk about four important points here. So which are compute power, memory, storage and time. So training these models require clusters of powerful GPUs. These GPUs are used to handle the massive amount of calculations involved in processing and optimizing the neural network parameters. So for example, this GPT-3 was trained on thousands of GPUs over several weeks. Okay. And then if you talk about memory, so generative AI models have large memory requirements due to their size and the amount of data they need to process simultaneously during training. And next thing is storage. So to train LLMs, we need large scale data sets. And these large scale data sets and model checkpoints require substantial storage capacity to store and access data efficiently during training. And then time. To train such models, can take weeks or even months depending upon the size of the data set and then the model architecture and the available compute resources. So the next question is, can we train LLM on our local machines? So, so it is generally impractical to train models like ChatGPT or Llama 3 on a standard local machine due to the high compute and the memory requirements. So these models are typically trained on cloud-based platforms that provide access to scalable resources like GPUs. Okay. We can't train the LLMs on local machines, but we can fine tune them and uh, you can fine tune the LLM as per your requirement, as per your use cases. For example, open source models like Llama 3. So they provide pre-trained models that can be fine tuned for a specific task or applications without needing to start the training from scratch. So by utilizing these pre-trained models, developer can save significant cost associated with data collection, processing, and the compute resources that are required for initial training. Now let's talk about some benefits of open source LLMs over the paid ones. So the commercial LLMs raise concerns about data leaks and unauthorized access to sensitive information. But with open source LLMs, companies have complete control over the data security. Organizations can protect personal data using open source alternatives without relying on any external uh, providers. Okay. So in my upcoming videos, we'll work with different LLMs will see how to use them and how to fine tune them for our personal requirements will create projects using different LLMs okay now let's talk about few applications where we can use LLMs so the text generation AI models can be used for variety of applications like uh, creative writing generating stories and poems and then um, they can write articles they can write product descriptions they can write social media posts and then we can use text generation models in language translations right and we can use text generation models in uh, conversational agents like to when you want to create chatbots or virtual assistants with natural language processing over there we can use such models and uh, if we talk about image generation models we can use them for creative arts when you want to generate unique artwork based on textual descriptions okay so this is what generative ai is and uh, i hope this video is helpful and guys if you like my content please like share and subscribe my channel thank you for watching